producers include many photosynthetic bacteria, producers includes algae, producers includes plants, all of the plants. Without those plants, no life, no life is possible. They do photosynthesis, utilizes carbon dioxide and water and sunlight energy and makes energy in the chemical form that is usually called ATP, the adenosine triphosphate and makes carbohydrates for the use by themselves and for the use for um, the consumers. We call the producers the entry point of energy inside an ecosystem. Let us have a look on uh, some plants. You can see in this picture that plants are growing on a rock on the bank of a river. Then comes the consumers. These are the second level of feeding or we can call second trophic level. But these are themselves divided into further levels as we looked at in a pyramid. Consumers utilizes organic carbon source. They can eat upon plants or they can eat upon other animals. Consumers uh, uses, utilizes the carbohydrates produced by the plants. Their types are primary, secondary and tertiary consumers. Primary consumers which, which eat upon plants, we also call them herbivores. Then comes the secondary consumers, we also call them carnivores. They eat upon the herbivore animals. Then comes tertiary consumers, which eat upon the other carnivores. Then we have another category called omnivores. We say herbivores, the organisms, the animals which feed upon plants, the carnivores, the animals which feed upon other animals, the omnivores, which eat upon both plant and animal material. For example, human beings, we are omnivores. We eat, we eat vegetables, plants. We also eat meat, the animals. So, omnivores are the organisms who can, fe who can feed upon both animal and plant sources. They, are fe they can, uh, if they get animal, they can eat animal and its parts. If they get uh, plant for their food, they can get plant for their, um, as their food. Few animals, you can see a red panda in this picture, which is uh, eating some leaves of um, a tree. So, it is a herbivore, an elephant. A very huge and large animal, but it also feed upon the plants. It's a vegetarian animal. A consumer, a cat, it is eating. You can see in the picture that it is eating a bone. Bones, you know, are the part of uh, animal's body. So it's a carnivore. Then you can see another carnivore, an eagle, which is attacking upon a pigeon. Pigeon, we know, eats grains. So pigeon is a plant eater, and the eagle is a carnivore, that is the meat eater which is eating upon the pigeon. Only worse, bears. Bears can eat both plant and animal matter. If they get a, an animal to eat, a small animal, they eat upon it. If they get plants, legumes or other plants, they eat upon the plants. So they are also omnivore like us. Then comes the decomposers. Decomposers are two major groups. One are called fungi. Fungi is a major group which particularly eat upon the dead organic matter. Then there are a lot many types of bacteria which are present in soil, in water and in other, other places which break up the dead organic matter and uh, utilize it for making their own food and energy um, and then they convert those organic matters into small organic molecules. These small organic molecules are later utilized by the plants, um, plants actually absorb uh, those um, inorganic or organic matters from the soil with the help of their roots and the roots gets those materials and make them part of the plant body. So decomposers are extremely important because number one, they convert all the dead organic matter which is present in uh, large quantities otherwise and could be accumulated and could be bad for environment. They convert those dead, dead organic materials into more usable forms and more um, better forms for the environment. So decomposers and secondly, decomposers um, convert the materials into usable forms which are used by the plants. So a cycle continues and energy in the ecosystem which is, which is coming through sunlight through producers keep flowing in the form of a cycle.
Now the abiotic components. There are not many abiotic components that is non-living components present in an ecosystem. The abiotic components, the non-living components, for example, water, light, air, soil. Water for example is one of the most important abiotic components of an ecosystem. Water is a limiting factor for the growth and for development of life because we know that water is required for all the life forms to live, to continue their life processes. Water is involved to, to support life. For example, plants when they are growing, they need water. For converting energy from one form to another form, they need water. Animals need to drink water. For their metabolic process, they require water. Water is part of their body. Light is also a very important factor because we know that all the energy is coming, which is coming inside the ecosystem, is coming in the form of sunlight. Sunlight have energy, which is utilized by the plants to make their chemical energy that they can use uh, because sunlight energy they cannot use directly. They have to convert it into some chemical form of energy and also plants utilize the sunlight energy to make their food by photosynthesis and the carbon cycle. Then air, air is also very important factor because air many most of the times air manages the temperature of the environment and air currents are also responsible for uh, different processes of life. For example, uh, distribution of spores of a plant, it depends upon many times air currents. Then um, soil, soil is very important abiotic factor because soil is the place to support the plant life and the animal life. Particularly, plants grow in specific types of soils. Soils have their own properties. They have their uh, um, particle size. They have pores in it. Different types of soils have different pore sizes in, um, uh, in themselves. And these pores accommodate water. These pores accommodate gases. Uh, and the soil also have uh, soil also have different types of bacteria, uh, which convert or decompose the organic matters. So soil is also a very important abiotic factor. Then comes rain. Rain is also a very important factor because when uh, the waters, the water bodies, they evaporates, and the water go in the atmosphere in the form of uh, uh, vaporized water and makes clouds then it causes the raining. Rain is very important because it provides a runoff water which is available to plants and to other life forms for, um, for example, for animals um, for their drinking and for supporting the plant life in the soil. So abiotic factors, they are as important as the biotic factor, factors, living organisms, the animals, the plants in an ecosystem. Let us have a look, a brief look on a picture, on a diagram, which shows that how energy flowing in an ecosystem and how abiotic factors are interaction with the biotic factors. You can see on a side a water body from which through evaporation water is going towards the atmosphere due to the heat of sunlight. That water, these water vapors collect uh, and condense in the atmosphere to make clouds and these clouds when they rain, then they produce a rain. This rain is returning that water back to the environment. You see, you can see the rain on the mountains and then the rain water is coming down and this water is supporting a lot of life, different types of plants, different types of animals. And then slowly this runoff water is going down, down, down back to the same place from where it was evaporated. And then you can see that uh, there are different types of plants which are uh, utilizing the sunlight energy to make their food. And then these plants are eaten up by the animals. Those animals are eaten up by the other animals. You can see a bird. And uh, then all of these organisms are going back when they die or they shed their parts like plants. They are going back to the soil and the decomposers in the soil, they are breaking them up into smaller pieces, very, very small molecules, organic and inorganic molecules which are again taken up by the plants, make the, their, the part of their body and then they come back to the cycle. Here you can see a desert ecosystem. Now we are going to cover some examples 
of different types of ecosystems in the world and in Pakistan. There are two terms, climate and weather. Weather is a short term change in any of the uh, abiotic factor like temperature. Um, for example, we know that temperature of the uh, day is uh, different and of the night is different. The seasonal changes are there. The climate actually represent long term changes in environmental factors. For example, due to greenhouse effect we know the temperature of the earth has risen to about uh, 1 to 2 degree centigrade. So, climate represent long term changes in an environment and the climate of an area is responsible for making different types of ecosystem uh, ecosystems and let them develop and grow. We divide ecosystems into uh, two major categories, the aquatic ecosystems and the terrestrial ecosystems. Aquatic eco ecosystems, ecosystems present in water and uh, terrestrial ecosystems, ecosystems present on land.